welcome back everybody. Hopefully you guys are having an awesome day and having a great weekend. I really appreciate the support on the channel and I'm thankful that you guys are coming back and watching a new video. So just came in the room 24 hour ish after we fed all the baby ball pythons. Everybody seems to be doing very well. I haven't really checked on that many of them. I've only opened a couple drawers, but nobody's regurgitated. And if you guys have been around snakes that have regurgitated, you definitely know what it smells like and it is probably the most nastiest, foulest, na most disgusting thing you'll ever smell like. Ugh, it's just gross. So you know exactly when a snake is gonna regurgitate or has regurgitated. So if you walk in your house, because it will smell the house up, or your snake room, and it doesn't smell like complete death, then you're good <laughs> pretty much on that. So again, this is the butter clown. Um, there is a little bit of poop in here. Well, that's, actually this is pee. They do pee sometimes uh, solid, which is kind of interesting. But look at this mess. Like she's shedding out. She's having a, I mean, it's a gorgeous animal. Having a horrible shed. Um, this, is, this is what I'm working with. I got refuge chip, which is supposed to be the best, I'm not saying it, it's not good or anything like that. Uh, but you guys know I've been struggling with this ARS rack. Full water. I haven't touched the water in, and that's that's how it's supposed to be. Um, kind of broken up. Refuge chip. Some of the snakes shed out. My bow is shed out. Nine out of ten times perfectly. I have quite a few of the ball pythons that will shed out. I just don't understand why I'm still struggling with the poor sheds, when this is supposed to be the setup that you're supposed to just put your snake in and it's supposed to be, you know, less maintenance than something that you're gonna build. So, I wonder if I have any water in here. I have a little bit in here, so we'll just spray it down. I, I mean, I hate soaking ball pythons because they're not naturally supposed to be in water. But if she has a bad shed, sometimes we just have to do what we have to do to make sure that they shed clean. Now, um, this might work. Um, I mean, it pretty much is peeling off of her very well. I could probably just, you know, after I soak her, I could just go through here and uh, Peel some of this stuff off because it is pretty much just on the surface. But I'm gonna let her do her thing, rummage around in this uh, refuge chip right here, and then we'll see tomorrow if she has a clean shed. If not, we'll just do a little bit extra on her. But this is how it goes sometimes. <clears throat> BPI jungle looking really, really nice. Let's check out some of these other ones. So this girl is going back in the shed. And now that I am feeding them uh, small rats every week, it seems like they are growing pretty quickly, growing faster, which is definitely a good thing, staying healthy. That's for sure, gotta clean out her cage. In the back at least, there's some poop in there. This girl looks good. There's just a little bit of right here so when you have multiple snakes every single day it's pretty much uh, it's how it is constantly cleaning and I, I'll give her some water she's black pastel pied she's definitely getting she's definitely getting thick and then this girl's looking good too so we'll clean out some of her urine so we'll check on some of the babies Ish that eight. This guy's not having any problems. Looking good. Superfly clown. Looking a little curious. Shouldn't be hungry. He's just eating. And yeah, I gotta put some water in hers. Fire yellow belly. Uh, and she hi. I love her markings. And I guess we can check out some of these ones. I know I got 
Uh, some crap everywhere. That's what happens when we got jobs and everything else with the animals. Not saying that's a bad thing. So here's the the banana pied. And as we can see, she did eat quite a large meal. And uh, really there's no excessive lump in her body. So I think the the size that she's on is definitely good for her and she's only three months, maybe four, so or less. I don't even like I don't think I've had her that long. The time just kind of runs together. So let's check out some of the uh the bigger snakes over here. Show you guys some of those. I have to feed all of them. I have to feed Pop Tart, I have to feed the berm the motley and mountain dew so got a lot of got a lot of stuff going on here this weekend uh, i'll try to get a video out for you guys on feeding them because i know everybody likes seeing the feeding videos but the bigger snakes are definitely much cooler to watch eat especially the big strikes and with that argentine we never know what's going to happen even getting her out should be an excitement so we're definitely going to check her out because we haven't seen her in a while so stay tuned all right most of you know that this is the argentine boa she is a pure blood with nothing else in her this girl is outside of her cage a very sweet and docile animal it's just when she's in her cage she wants to kill me whenever she sees me um, so that's why if you can see over there i put up the uh the blocks on her her glass because any commotion, anytime I walk near her, or even if she sees me, she will strike the glass. And then she doesn't just strike the glass, she will chew and gnaw at it trying to get to me. Uh, and I know I've said this plenty of times before, but if you guys do have snakes that are extremely defensive in their enclosures and they do strike the glass, I would highly recommend putting up paper or something like that because I would hate to see my snakes or your snakes um, hitting the glass just at that right angle at the at the right speed and breaking their jaws um, or breaking their necks and then they die so I've, I've heard numerous horror stories about that that's the one thing that I will say that I do not like about open PVC cages uh, but other than that I do like them and they do serve a good purpose on most snakes we do some of us have our grumpy snakes so um, on that you know so she's got some air in her intestines so this girl is on large rats I'm feeding her right now every two weeks I was every three I pushed that to two weeks because maybe that will help her in her uh, defensiveness and um, just just trying to get some nutrition in her as she's growing and these girls or even the males, the Argentines in general, just get large for a boa. I'll say that. Um, I've seen 10 foot, 9, 10 foot, or even possibly even a little bit bigger uh, Argentines. So they are, they do get bigger, I would say, than the common BCI. So I trust her out to a certain extent. I don't trust her around my face. Um, putting around my neck is fine as long as her face is not too close to mine. Um, even though they do have a very good strike range. Um, I like to put some space in between the, uh, the, 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 the dangerous end of her. But, you know, all in all, I, I can say that it, she's been a fantastic snake to have and to work with outside, outside of her cage. So, um... We'll put her back and then we'll just check out a couple of the other snakes because I'm going to feed them, like I said, in the next video. And then we haven't seen them in a while and we probably won't see them sometime until next week. And this is the ghost boa. She is 100% het for albino, but that has no effect on her colorations as we can see her and how she is. A lot of you guys do like the ghosts. Some of you guys have super ghosts. Some of you guys have a lot of combos with the ghosts in them. The ghost is a fantastic snake and it's 
regular form, I would say, um, but you can add quite a bit of stuff into them and make them a lot better, such as um, albino. You can get snows and moon glows out of them, and then if you add IMG, they look incredible. And then if you put another ghost with them, you can get the super ghosts. And I've seen some of you guys have the super form, and they look really nice as well. The one thing I do like about them is they do have the random spots on them, the black speckling, which is really cool. It kind of gives them just a little bit of a personal touch and a little bit of a uniqueness to them. But I do love the colorations on them. I know I say it all the time, but... This girl is super sweet, super nice. Um, you know, just the browns and the blacks and the whites and the belly looks really cool too. Nice, just a nice creamy color with, uh, with a bunch of speckling on her. And she has gotten a lot more uh, since she's been getting older and, and shedding more. But this girl is always curious about what's going on. She's a fun snake to have out. She's not too wild. Uh, she's never tried to bite me and she just loves to be held so it's a good animal to have out uh, if you want to have a good interacting animal uh, one that'll not just you know like a ball python that'll just you know stay like that forever but just something where you know it's all it's always nice to have uh, a few snakes that have a good personality i would say uh, some of them and you guys know that I have one or two that i am working with that hate me <laughs> and sometimes it's the argentine that we just saw but it depends on her attitude and sometimes it's the vpi aztec so we all we all have one or two snakes that uh keep us keep us on our toes for sure and most of the time this girl is really curious about the camera but right now she's she's not so she's on mediums she gets a medium every two weeks um, and then I won't, I won't feed her larges until she's at least the size of the Argentine, probably, I don't know, next year, maybe, but just growing them, um, you know, not, nothing crazy, nothing too fast. I don't really have any plans on, on breeding them. So we'll just see what happens in the future that is. And we'll just check out the Burmese and that will be it. All right, so this girl was born two years ago on November, and she is growing very nicely. I, I personally think, and I know a lot of people will probably tell me otherwise, but for her being two, I think she has a solid um, body tone on her. She's, as you can see, she's not skinny or thin by any means, um, and then she doesn't have any fat rolls on her. She doesn't have any fat pockets on her. And she doesn't look like she's been having rats stuffed down her throat every five days for the last two years. But she is now on smalls. Yeah, like small, small rats. Um, she will eat birds just fine, quail chicks and stuff like that. And I've had no problem switching her over from birds to rats. So it's really nice that she can have a variety of food without getting stuck on one or the other. So... Um, and she's just been a, well, now she's been more phenomenal, I would say, but just like every other small Burmese, um, they, they do have a little bit of an attitude when they're babies. They do like to huff and puff and strike, but getting tagged is not a big deal. They don't bite and wrap unless it's going to be a, a food indicator, um, or a food response, which she's never done. And I don't think I've actually gotten bit by her, but she has struck at me and then she just acts like she's going to bite. So I hear that a lot. And then once they get bigger and bigger, they just tame out and they just get super mellow. And then basically what everybody says that have adult berms is if you put your time into them and you socialize with them and you feed them, you know, properly, they, they're actually just as docile as ball pythons. So they're just a gigantic ball python. But they do get big. They do get heavy. They do require a lot of food and a lot of maintenance. So, you know, be prepared. And I am, you know, 
I hope I'm prepared. I think I'm prepared. I think I've done enough research on the berms and the anacondas that I should be okay, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but you never know until until you have a 15 foot animal that weighs 180 pounds or less, you know, whatever it is, 100 pounds, 80 pounds, you never know. But this girl is super curious, super sweet. So she has a pearl. Um, it's the hypo and the albino. So if you guys like me, like the albinos as babies, but you don't really like how they look as adults. Um, a pearl is a fantastic option because I don't know if you, you guys should be able to see how um, yellowy and orangey she is. And she's got, I mean, her spots almost remind me of kind of like a, uh, a giraffe, kind of, with, with, the, with, the with the spots and stuff like that. May, maybe that's a reach, but I don't know, to me, kind of. And as they get older, the colors stay and the patterns stay. So they do stay bright and they, they do keep a lot of, you know, she's gonna look like this um, or brighter possibly as an adult. So I just wanted to show you guys a couple of the snakes before we feed them, hang out with them for just a little bit. So you guys that, um, you know, you, you, you socialize with your animals, they can be uh, great pets. And hopefully you guys have an awesome weekend. And again, I really appreciate the support in the channel. Hopefully you guys, uh, Come back for more videos and I'll see you on the next one.